a very good afternoon everyone and warmly welcome all of you for our today's edition of Equity Edge brought to you by SoftLogic Stockbroker. Um, and for today's discussion, we have something very interesting and very timely. Um, so as most of us are aware about, so SoftLogic Life PLC or also known as AEIC, the second largest life insurance company in Sri Lanka recently announced that they will be going ahead with a share buyback. Um, so we know that Soflogic Life has had a very very robust growth over the past years and even significantly outperformed the life insurance industry as well. So let me give you a little bit of context into this whole share buyback. So basically as all of us know Soflogic Life has 375 million shares, uh, totally issued shares and the way that they have structured this share buyback is uh, the company intends to buy back 5 shares out of every 32 shares which they have issued to their shareholders at an offer price of rupees 102 and 40 cents. So in the event the issue is fully subscribed the company may buy back a total of 58.6 million shares which in turn may reduce the total issued shares of uh, Softlogic Life to 316.4 million shares. Um, and also something to note about is, uh, so based on the offer price of 102 rupees and 40 cents, uh, the company may witness a cash outflow of uh, rupees 6 billion if the issue is fully subscribed. So the issue is expected to conclude tomorrow which is 31st of July. Um, so the big question is why this share buyback? So without taking further time let me introduce to you our guest speaker today who will give you more insights on this AAIC share buyback. So it is Mr. Iftika Ahmed the Managing Director of Softlogic Life PLC who will be with us to share his valuable thoughts on this uh, proposed share buyback of Softlogic Life. Mr. Ahmed, warmly welcome you to our program today. Thank you. And so without taking further time, let's dive into our discussion. So Mr. Ahmed, the big question as I mentioned, what is the whole rationale behind the share buyback of Softlogic Life? Why exactly is Softlogic Life going ahead with this share buyback? Right. So, uh, like I said, uh, I'm very happy to be here and to, uh, you know, spend some time in terms of uh, discussing uh, this latest uh, announcement by Softlogic Life Insurance PLC. Our uh, CSC code is AAIC. And uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, this uh, entire initiative. Uh, Softlogic Life Insurance is one of the most strongly performing insurance companies in the market. Uh, the company has grown uh, tremendously. Uh, its uh, CAGR, uh, five-year CAGR uh, is something in the range of uh, 25%. Uh, it has grown at a compounded annual growth rate of uh, 25%. Uh, this is versus an industry growth of about, let's say, 14%, which means that it's almost growing a double what the industry has grown. Now, what the company does is that it offers uh, protection, mainly protection uh, products to its uh, policyholders. Uh, this is a, a little different or quite different from investment type uh, policy products uh, which uh, I think the majority of the market offers. So the, the profitability or the profit margins on uh, protection products is significantly higher. Now when you combine the growth rates that uh, I mentioned and when you, when you take the company's uh, performance over the last uh, five uh, to seven years, uh, we have grown at a fairly exponential rate. Now, because of the profitability that we have achieved, because also that we have had so far a fairly conservative dividend policy where we distribute only 50% of the profits made each year to our shareholders, the company has accumulated a fair amount of uh, capital over the years. Uh, because this, these are strong growth rates and strong profitability that the company has seen. And uh, based on this accumulation of uh, capital, uh, we tend to look at 
uh, what we call the capital adequacy ratio for insurance companies. Uh, the, the regulatory requirement is 120 uh, percent and SoftLogic life is currently over 300 percent, right. So obviously from a, a capital adequacy perspective, the amount of capital that is required uh, to run the business, right, there is a, a huge excess. So in order to be more prudent, in order to be more efficient and to also have uh, some efficient uh, parameters in terms of how we operate, especially our return on equity, because if there is excess capital other than earning in, uh, interest income, there isn't anything else that we achieve from that. So we do, we really don't need that for our business, right? So as a result, uh, we felt that uh, the capital adequacy of the company is uh, is quite high, and even after doing this share buyback, we will comfortably be in the region of 300 percent for capital adequacy. Uh, so hence uh, the thought process towards uh, giving back some of the funds that are not required by the company uh, back to our shareholders. Thank you Mr. Hamad. I think that was a very insightful uh, answer. So basically moving on to my next question. So in the event this issue is fully subscribed, so we will witness the company seeing a cash outflow of uh, 6 billion rupees. So you fairly mentioned a bit about this as well in your previous answer. but um, how will this be funded basically Mr. Hamad and also in your view, uh, will this cash outflow, will it have any sort of a material impact on future growth plans of AIC? What are your thoughts on that? Right. So uh, see, uh, as far as uh, uh, the portfolio of uh, SoftLogic uh, Life is concerned, I think we have a total fund base exceeding 50 billion LKR. And uh, another reason to look at this uh, share buyback is uh, because the company invested uh, fairly heavily uh, when rates, when interest rates uh, actually peaked in the Sri Lankan market. Uh, I think all of you will remember uh, that after the financial crisis that the country had, uh, inflation went to 70 percent, 80 percent, interest rates climbed all the way I think to 25, 28 percent. And uh, at uh, SoftLogic Life, what we did uh, very uh, carefully was uh, we we entered into uh, high yielding um, uh, investments at uh, we think what, what we think was the correct time right we actually held back uh, all our investments uh, uh, waiting for rates to actually climb up and when they climbed up all the way to 25 28 uh, percent we've locked in a, a sizable part of our portfolio into uh, into these investments at high rates okay. now that interest rates have come down uh, there is uh, a significant capital gain that is available to the company uh, on its investment portfolio. So um, uh, a good part of uh, this buyback is also being uh, financed by uh, the capital of uh, arising from the capital gains that the company has uh, has realized. So it is not the entirety. Uh, there will be some impact in its uh, in our profitability, uh, meaning in terms of the profit after tax the company will earn. Uh, but uh, overall, net net. We yet think from a performance point of view, from a ROE perspective, it is good for our stock. Uh, our profitability we expect will improve, improve because uh, historically we have delivered uh, ROE in excess of 20 percent for the last uh, I think three to four years. And uh, with this buyback, uh, this ROE uh, parameter should increase even further, right? And uh, in terms of return, in terms of being attractive uh, as a counter in terms of you know the capital employed and how much return shareholders get is going to be uh, is going to continue to be interesting uh, for shareholders. Thank you Mr. Hamad. So uh, moving on to my next question which is the most frequently uh, inquired question by most of our investors. So basically the offer price. So the offer price is at 102 rupees and 40 cents. So even if we look at today's market price of AAIC which is hovering around 65-64 levels, this is a good premium of close to 58 or 55 plus. So Mr. Hamad, can you just uh, give our audience some insights on how the company you know, arrived at this right. offer price right. and also let's make this uh, a, a very good opportunity to give some insights on uh, the proper mechanism of valuing an insurance company. Because what we've noticed is the appraisal valuation technique which we believe to be the most suitable mechanism for valuation 
of insurance is not frequently used by investors and uh, thus using uh, other mechanisms which, which are very much not appropriate will not rather lead them to unlock the true potential of insurance sector counters. So Mr. Hamad, if you can give yeah. some thoughts uh, or rather share your thoughts on uh, these uh, things, yeah, sure. I think it will be cool. Yeah, I think the first thing that I want to point out is that um, the price per share actually does not or in our case did not determine the value of the buyback right uh, i think i just want to make that clear first right because i think there is a, a common kind of misconception where you know you because you 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 the price is high that means the payout is larger right uh, that was definitely not the case as far as uh, our uh, share buyback transaction was concerned we looked at this in two ways right the first was the amount of capital that can be uh, utilized for the buyback right and i think uh, that was determined as uh, uh, 6 billion lkr now once that quantum was established because that quantum is key towards understanding the the remaining capitalization of the company and i think what is most important is uh, the requirement for the company to continue to grow and meet its objectives right without any hindrance or without any deficit because that i think is the 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 prime uh, thinking when we when we when we look at our company's plans when we look at our future we always make sure that there is no hindrance there is no uh, hurdles or there and that there is a clear path for us to be able to grow without any issues so in in order to establish and to understand that path we have to know how much capital we need so when we understand the requirement for capital we have established that amount so therefore we know 6 billion can be given back to shareholders so that was the amount of the 6 billion buyback that is part one of the exercise the second part is in terms of establishing the price per share right and uh, as uh, you correctly mentioned uh, the local market tends to look at you know price to book uh, kind of uh, parameters uh, eps uh, pe you know things like that unfortunately our our market doesn't have enough uh, insurance counters to uh, actually establish the principle of uh, uh, embedded value or appraisal value. So what we've done is we've looked at uh, the numbers. Uh, we have uh, we wanted to establish the concept of uh, embedded value, which is very crucial for a life insurance uh, company. And uh, so whilst embedded value is the current block of business that the company has, uh, the appraisal value is a further element that sits on top of the embedded value which is the future business that the company already has the future business that the company is forecasting so you you have the embedded value then you have this other element you put it together and you get the appraisal value so the appraisal value is a common international way in which uh, life insurance companies are valued so what we've done is we brought our valuation uh, very uh, close to uh, a multiple of uh, basically uh, uh, appraisal value and that's the basis on which uh, the price has been fixed for this buyback. Thank you Mr. Hammer. that was very insightful. So moving on to my final question. So basically all of us know Softlogic Life has been a, a, a outperformer in the industry. So as uh, Mr. Hammer correctly mentioned uh, previously also the the CAGR, the compounded growth rate of Softlogic Life has you know, by far outperformed the uh, life insurance industry in Sri Lanka. Um, however, we know the life insurance penetration in Sri Lanka stands at a relatively low level. So, if you look at the 2023 level, it was about close to 0.6 percent. Correct, that's right. Yeah. yeah, so which, I mean, if you compare <coughs> that figure with the regional peers, I think we are on a relatively lower end. Uh, so Mr. Hamad, in this backdrop, I mean we know for a fact AIC has been very robust. What are your plans to maintain this robust growth momentum over the near term or in the forecast years? As in what sort of growth plans does AIC have in order to sustain this growth in the future? Right. So um, you know that's a very, uh, a very good uh, question because uh, when you talk about the insurance industry, I think uh, what uh, you normally need to look at is, you know, how many people have insurance, uh, how, what is the penetration of insurance, and as you uh, correctly pointed out, the insurance penetration in Sri Lanka is very, very low, right? It's at, uh, as you said, 0.6% thereabouts. Now, 
a uh, couple of things what the 0.6 percent means in terms of low penetration is that the opportunity for insurance is obviously then substantially present right if it if the if the peer if the peers in the peer countries around us are going at uh, basically let's say you know four percent right uh, the possibility or the potential for sri lanka's life insurance industry is a is a is a significant multiple you know five six times growth so i think the first thing is uh, to concentrate on the sri lankan market look at the different uh, segments uh, look at the different products and see how we can continue uh, with this robust uh, performance uh, we are a very dynamic uh, uh, company uh, we have uh, the best uh, you know corporate management team uh, we have a very very talented team at uh, all levels of the organization and uh, we are not content uh, to stand still uh, we want to basically see what opportunities there are and go and pursue those opportunities wherever and whenever it is possible so uh, we are very positive uh, in terms of sri lanka's uh, outlook as we all know uh, sri lanka has come back uh, from uh, a very um, uh, very almost dangerous position in terms of uh, a number of economic <coughs> parameters uh, growth foreign reserves uh, inflation uh, currency if you take all those items i think the country has uh, stabilized in a very uh, a very meaningful way uh, i think uh, it's something fantastic uh, that sri lanka has achieved in a relatively short period of time despite everything uh, that happened to the country uh, in uh, 2022 and uh, so we are very uh, we are very positive about what this the prospects that uh sri lanka uh has and for the insurance industry in sri lanka i think uh, very soon we will have uh, we now that we have the imf uh, matter sorted out very soon we will have the isb uh, uh international sovereign bond issue i think which is one of the few remaining things to be sorted out uh, that will be uh, resolved and then uh, i think sri lanka is uh, uh free to uh, free to grow and uh, we look to that uh, future Uh, with a great deal of optimism right uh, it might be uh, in sri lanka even it might be even outside the shores of sri lanka but from a soft logic life insurance perspective uh, we are uh, we are very positive in terms of the prospects uh, that are there for life and health insurance uh, as far as soft logic life goes thank you mr hamad so i think uh, you share a lot of valuable thoughts with the audience so i think with that we can uh, bring this session to an end Um so hope our audience gathered a lot about uh, the share buyback of AIC as well as the future growth plans of Softlogic Life Insurance from uh, uh, the managing director of Softlogic Life uh, PLC Ms. Deepika Ahmed. So thank you once again for joining with us and also like to extend a, a special thank you to our audience. Uh thank you so much for joining with us today and hope to see all of you from another episode of uh, Equity Edge. Till then thank you and have a safe day